This video is part one of chapter six, which is on cells. Cells are the fundamental units of life, and all organisms are made of cells. They are also considered to be the simplest collection of matter that exhibits the characteristics of life, which we've talked about before. All cells are related by descent from earlier cells, and cells can differ greatly from one another, but all of them share some common features. We will start by looking at the two basic types of cells, prokaryotic and eukaryotic. Only organisms in the domains bacteria and archaea consist of prokaryotic cells, whereas all other organisms have eukaryotic cells. If we compare prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells, they share some basic features. First of all, they all have a plasma membrane. They all contain some sort of semi-fluid substance called a cytosol. The prefix cyto means cell and the suffix sol means fluid or liquid. They all have chromosomes which carry genes and they all have ribosomes which make proteins. Prokaryotic cells are characterized by having no nucleus. The prefix pro means before and the term karyo means nucleus. So we would say that these cells are before a nucleus. They do contain DNA in a region called a nucleoid. They do not have any membrane-bound organelles, and that's one of the primary characteristics of prokaryotic cells. They do contain cytoplasm, which is similar to the cytosol, which is the fluid inside the cell, and it is bounded by a plasma membrane. If we look at prokaryotic cells, we can tell that they are fairly similar, or fairly simple. Here is a diagrammatic version. Here's the chromosome. Notice this is kind of organized in a a glob for any a lack of a better way of putting it. They have a plasma membrane. They also have cell walls and many of them have flagella which we'll learn about later. Notice that they are very very small. This is an electron micrograph of a prokaryotic cell and its width is only 0.5 micrometers which is very very small. Eukaryotic cells on the other hand are characterized by some other particular um, structures. First of all, their DNA is found in a nucleus that's bounded by what's called the nuclear envelope. They also contain membrane-bound organelles, and then similar to prokaryotic cells, they have cytoplasm. The presence of membrane-bound organelles is what characterizes eukaryotic cells. It is not enough to just say that eukaryotic cells have a nucleus. They also have membrane-bound organelles. The term eukaryotic describes the fact that they have a nucleus. The prefix U means true, and as we've already seen, the term karyo means nucleus. Typically, eukaryotic cells are larger than prokaryotic cells and more complex in terms of their internal organization. The plasma membrane, as we mentioned before, is the cell's membrane, and it is a selective barrier that allows the passage of a variety of substances in and out, and we'll spend more time on it in a later chapter. If we want to take a look at the eukaryotic cell, as we mentioned, it, we're going to see that it has a number of internal membranes that divide the cell up into organelles. The basic structure of these membranes is a double layer of phospholipids, which we've discussed before. If we look at plant and animal cells, they have most of the same organelles and characteristics, although there are some distinct differences. Here is a diagram of a typical eukaryotic cell. You can see the plasma membrane surrounds it. You've got the nucleus which contains the chromosomes and it's bounded by a nuclear envelope. And then there are a variety of other organelles inside which we'll talk about in the next few slides. We're going to start first with the nucleus which is where all of the cells, well not all of, but a majority of the cells DNA is found. We're also going to talk about ribosomes because they are an integral part of transmitting the genetic information. <clears throat> the nucleus is basically the information center of the cell. And as I mentioned earlier, it contains most of the cell's genes and is usually the largest and most obvious organelle. It is surrounded by a plasma membrane which forms what's called the nuclear envelope. What's unique about the nuclear envelope is it is a double membrane, meaning it is two lipid bilayers. If we look at the diagram here, we can see that. Notice that there are two layers in the membrane. If we look at a magnified version of that, we can see that there are two layers of the membrane. Notice that there are little pores 
in the nucleus that are made up of proteins. They allow the passage of substances in and out of the nucleus in a fairly easy fashion. The DNA is organized into units called chromosomes. We'll spend more time on chromosomes later, but we'll give a general overview now. Each chromosome is composed of a single DNA molecule, which is wrapped around specific types of proteins. When we add the DNA to the proteins, we call that chromatin. That's the material that makes up chromosomes. The chromatin will condense to form specific and discrete chromosomes as the cell gets ready to divide. Another structure we find within the nucleus is called the nucleolus, and it is the site of ribosomal RNA synthesis, which is ribosomal RNA is part of the ribosome and helps um, carry out its function. Ribosomes are made up of this RNA as well as a couple of different kinds of proteins. And what they do is they carry out protein synthesis in two places, either in the cytosol, and these are what we call free ribosomes because they're not bound to anything, or ribosomes can carry out protein synthesis in the endoplasmic reticulum or in the nuclear envelope. We call these bound ribosomes because they are stuck in those membranes. You can see that here. Here are bound ribosomes found inside the endoplasmic reticulum. Notice that the ribosomes are made up of two protein subunits, a large one and a small one. If we extend off from the nuclear envelope, we get into what's called the endomembrane system. And the endomembrane system is a very, very important set of structures in the cell because it regulates protein production and movement and also performs a number of metabolic functions. There are six primary uh, structures within the endomembrane system. The nuclear envelope, the endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi apparatus, lysosomes, vacuoles, and the plasma membrane. These components are continuous or connected via transfer by what we call vesicles, which are little membranous bags. The endoplasmic reticulum accounts for approximately half of the total membrane structure in many eukaryotic cells, and it's also continuous with the nuclear envelope. What that means is the ER comes off of the nuclear envelope. There are two distinct regions of the ER, the smooth ER, which lacks ribosomes, and the rough ER, which contains ribosomes. If we look at the ER, we can notice the smooth ER here does not contain ribosomes and does not have that kind of rough uh, appearance. However, the rough ER contains ribosomes and has sort of a rough appearance. Now notice, if we look at the nuclear envelope, we can see that the double bilayer of the nuclear envelope extends into the ER. That's why we say that the ER is continuous with the nuclear envelope. The smooth ER is responsible for producing lipids, metabolizing carbohydrates, it helps to detoxify the cell, and it also stores calcium ions. The rough ER, since it contains ribosomes, is responsible for protein production, and there's a number of proteins that can be produced in the ER. What the ER does after it produces proteins is it stores these proteins, replaces these proteins in what are called transport vesicles, and these are sent throughout the cell. And another function of the rough ER is that it helps produce membranes for the cell. When a protein is produced in the rough ER, it is sent to the next set of membranes called the Golgi apparatus. And what the Golgi does is it receives these proteins through vesicles and it modifies the, these proteins and makes them functional. Typically, proteins produced in the ER, the rough ER, are non-functional or not ready to go. So what the Golgi does is it modifies these proteins, adds things to them, sorts and packages them, and then places them into transport vesicles. Here's the Golgi receiving a vesicle from the ER. These proteins are then modified throughout the Golgi, and then a transport vesicle is produced and sent off on its way. Some of these transport vesicles become what are called lysosomes, which are membranous bags which contain enzymes that can digest lots of different macromolecules. Lysosomes perform sort of a custodial function inside cells in that they help clean up used organelles and used molecules and break them down. So if we look at the endomembrane system, it is a complex dynamic structure that compartmentalizes some of the functions inside the cell. Remember that the ER is, con is continuous with the nuclear envelope. In the rough ER, proteins are produced that are packaged into vesicles that are sent to the Golgi. The Golgi processes those um, 
proteins and then may either package them into ribos or into lysosomes or may package them into transport vesicles that end up at the plasma membrane for secretion.